Actually, I can. Do you know why my first project didn't work? If you don't, stick around and you will learn something new. Let's look more closely at our problem. This is the breadboard prototype I originally had. When the button is not pressed, LED should be off. And yet it comes on and off in random fashion. We can open serial monitor in the code and output the signal read from the pin connected to the push button. After loading the program to the microcontroller, we observe the signal hectically changing from high to low. Let's look at the diagram and try to figure out what the hell is wrong with this setup. I use different pins here for both push button and LED just to check if this makes any difference. It does not. We have a push button in between Arduino 5 volts and A0 pin which is our input. Then we have LED that is connected via current limiting resistor to digital pin 9. This pin is declared as output. In the loop function we are reacting to the changing input signal at pin A0. When we read high signal off the pin, we send high signal to digital pin 9, which turns LED on. If the signal at pin is low, we send low signal to digital pin 9, which turns LED off. So when the button is pressed, we receive 5 volts at pin A0. Code recognizes it as high signal and sends high signal to pin 9, to lit LED. That part works great. When we release the button, what do we see at pin A0? We have a loose connection that is not connected anywhere. In today's world we are surrounded by various electronic equipment that emits electromagnetic interference, EMI signal in short. Our pin is susceptible to that EMI noise and this is the reason for the random changes of input from high to low. We call such loose pin a floating pin. Let's create the breadboard prototype for this project and run the code to see random values at the input pin. Okay, so we definitely have a problem here, but how can we fix it so our little setup works as we anticipate it to work? We can use so-called pull-down resistor to resolve that problem. We would also use A0 pin and connect it to 5 volts through push button. A0 pin has to be declared as input. When the button is pressed, we have 5 volts connected to the pin and the high signal is detected. When the button is released, we have a floating pin situation and the signal at pin A0 is all over the place. But what's gonna happen if apart from connecting A0 pin to one leg of the push button, we also connect it to ground via the large resistor. In our case, that would be 10K resistor. When the button is not pressed, the pin is pulled down to ground via the resistor and low signal can be read at the pin. When we push the button, the electricity starts flowing between 5 volts and ground. But what does it mean for the value read at the A0 pin? If you look closely at the setup, what does it look like? Doesn't it look like a voltage divider? It does, doesn't it? If you do not know what voltage divider is, I will not be explaining this in detail here. You can check my other video about photoresistors. The concept of voltage divider is thoroughly explained there. There is a formula to calculate the output voltage in the voltage divider circuit. In our case, that output voltage would be our input signal at pin A0. So in that formula, the resistor 1 would be our push button and resistor 2 would be our pull down resistor. The input voltage is 5 volts. The resistance of the push button is close to 0. So if we assume it is 0, then it disappears from our formula and we can reduce our two values and we end up with output voltage being equal to input voltage and that means we read high at our pin A0. So let's introduce pull down resistor in our setup. Again, here is the code we will use. 
Now when we press the button, we read high at the pin, and in the code, that triggers sending high signal to digital pin 9, which turns the LED on. When we release the button, the signal changes to low and the LED turns off. Let's add the pull-down resistor to the breadboard prototype and see if it changes the way LED is behaving. It does. Now LED is on only when the button is pressed. We can tackle this issue differently though, by using pull-up resistor. Just as pull-down resistor was pulling the signal down to ground, pull-up resistor would most likely pull up the signal to 5 volts. But let's not jump ahead of ourselves. In this scenario, we connect our input pin via push button to ground. So we get low reading at the pin when the button is pressed and see noise at the pin when the button is released. To resolve the problem, we introduce 10K pull-up resistor which connects A0 pin to 5 volts. So now, when the button is not pressed, we read high at the A0 pin. When we press the button, electricity flows from 5 volts to ground and we again have a voltage divider circuit. However, it is different this time. Now R1 represents pull-up resistor and R2 represents resistance of the push button. Here we also assume the resistance of the push button is zero and that means that our output voltage is equal to zero and we read low signal at 80 pin. Let's adjust our prototype and add pull-up resistor. We will use the same code. In this scenario, when the button is not pressed, pin A0 is pulled up to 5 volts. High signal is detected at the pin, and that results in high signal being sent to digital pin 9, and that turns LED on. When the button is pressed, we read low signal at pin A0, and that turns the LED off. After releasing the button, we read high signal again, and LED is back on. Let's reflect those changes in our setup and see how this works. So now we have ground connected via push button to input pin, with no pull-up resistor, and we see noise. Let's add pull-up resistor. Works fine, but we have opposite effect. LED is always on and it turns off when we press the button. If only there was a way to fix it, but there is. The only thing you have to do is to change the if statement in the code. Now we will send high signal to pin 9 when we detect low signal at A0 pin and low signal when pin A0 reports high. Let's reload the code and see the result. Perfect. There is one more ultimate twist to this pull-up pull-down resistor story. Each Arduino input pin has a built-in pull-up resistor, so we do not even have to include external pull-up resistors in our prototype. If that's the case, you would ask why did we have the problem in the first place? Pin A0 has a built-in pull-up resistor, why was it not used? Well, to be able to use it, you have to tell Arduino to use it. And we do it by adjusting input pin declaration. Instead of declaring pin as input, we declare it as input pull-up. Let's get rid of the pull-up resistor and reload altered code and check the result. Fantastic! I think I covered pretty much everything there is to know about pull-up and pull-down resistors. If you find it useful, like and share this video. If you want to see similar content in the future, subscribe to my channel. Special thanks to my patrons, or should I say my only patron at present. If you want to support my channel this way, you can find the link to my patron website in the description below. I'm out of here. I'll see you in my next video.